Hello y'all and welcome to Young Folk Knits. Today I have a finished DRK melt shawl that I'm very excited to share with you as well as some works in progress that I'm trying to make progress on and a new to me project something that I have never knitted before. So stick around and we'll jump right into it. Welcome back to Young Folk Knits. If you're new here, my name is Casey, and this is a channel where I love to share my love of fiber arts. So it's very knitting heavy, but I also share about spinning, sewing, and whatever other craft I might be getting up to at the moment. Sometimes I also share about living on a small farm here in Arkansas where my husband, myself, and our children are beekeepers. We love raising gardens. We love chickens and animals and spending time outdoors here in the foothills of the Ozarks. So if any of that sounds like it might be your cup of tea, make sure and hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on any new video content. Today I have a lineup of one finished object, <laughs> a couple of whips, and some plans. It feels like a very quintessential spring day here in Arkansas, even though technically it is not the first day of spring yet. I would say it is meteorologically spring. So today is March the 12th. It's pretty sunny, lightly cloudy with a high of 71 degrees today. So that's pretty perfect of a day outside. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but there's birds singing all over. They're very excited. We have a lot of bird feeders near our windows right here because we really love watching birds. And I think a lot of people during COVID kind of got into bird watching and we did as well. In fact, we have a lot of different books and our kids got the little, um, checklists where they had to you know check off all the different birds that they could find so we always love it whenever it's spring and we start seeing a lot more birds and a lot of different species of butterflies start coming back in fact i can see quite a few lovely ones <laughs> perched right outside enough about the weather though <laughs> moving on uh, my point in saying that it was March 12th is that tomorrow the DRK Melt Shawl is being released. Now this video should go live on Thursday, so I guess technically if you're watching this yesterday, the DRK Melt Shawl was released. But I got to test knit this shawl for Andrea Mowry. And this is my finished object. So this is a super fun DK weight shawl. I swear the C-130s come over every time I sit down to film. I'm not sure if they're on my schedule or if I'm on their schedule, but not cool. Okay, back to the knitting. And now my dogs are gonna freak out for the next 30 minutes. Let's try that again. So the DRK Melt Shawl is knit with three different colors in a DK weight. And the sample was knit with Explore Knits and Fibers and Lola Bean Yarn Co. I did not have access to either of those yarns whenever the test call went out. And um, they're both, you can, I think, order both of those yarns as pre-orders and they don't really have in stock yarns. So I needed to find some of my own yarn to use. And I chose yarn from Salty Blonde Yarn Co. 
Uh, Ryan is a really fantastic dyer. She has great colors and I went through some of her older colors and asked if she would allow me to do a custom order. So she let me pick three colors that I purchased for this shawl and she dyed them up for me. One of, you know what, I'm going to put the names on the screen because it has been so long since I knit this. I actually can't remember the names of them at this moment. So this was test knit back in November and it was due December 3rd. So it's actually been a minute since we tested this. Um, but they decided to push the release back, I think to be able to be ready with the different yarn companies to be able to order yarn to make this shawl. So I, I'm not really privy to all the details. I'm not sure, but I think that might've been why it was. So anyway, we did knit this back in November and being a DK weight, shawl with lots of garter stitch it actually doesn't take super long but there are some things in it that do increase the time a little bit and one of those things is that you are switching colors often and you actually cut your or break your yarn each time you use a contrasting color so as you can see all of these stripes have different colors in them and this is uh, used in the garter and then you hit some brioche sections and the brioche sections do use alternating all three colors and you do that a few times and then you get into some fan lace is this fan and fern or fern and fan but it's a very classic lace pattern that Andrea Mowry actually likes to use a lot in her shawls. And I love knitting this pattern. It's very easy to memorize. So I've enjoyed it. It's in the Boho Blush shawl. It's in the Birds of a Feather shawl. And it's probably in more. But those are the ones I have actually knit and I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, but then you just, you have quite a few garter sections and some short little brioche sections and you just keep repeating that pattern. So it's a very uh, fun knit to make. Another thing that you're doing is I-cord edging at both sides of the shawl. So it's got a very clean, neat side. And I have had problems in the past with my I-cord edging being too tight, even though I really am actually a very loose knitter. Um, but something to do with I-cord, I have a tendency for it to be a little bit tight. And whenever you have an I-cord edging with garter in the middle, there's almost nothing you can do to prevent yourself from it. It's just a tighter fabric. It does not really have stretch, whereas garter has loads of accordion like stretch to it. So something that Andrea Mowry has done in this pattern, and she started doing this in a few of her patterns, is she actually has you knit the I-cord stitch twice uh, fairly often throughout the pattern so that you're getting a little bit more I-cord fabric and it's going to match the garter a lot better. And I found that when I went to block this, it really did. It stretched out the way it needed to. I had enough I-cord fabric that it didn't, you know, have this really wonky look next to the garter where you had tried really hard to stretch it out <laughs> to get the correct shape. Or like at the top here, you know, like really pulled in. So I, I think that she was very smart to switch to that technique and I think that it shows well in a garter shawl. Genius. So then you do the lace edging here and you are switching colors. And I'll just be honest, while I was knitting this, I had a moment of Ooh, okay, so when I picked out my colors, I loved them. They're all three colors that I absolutely adore. I saw them next to each other and I was like, 100% those look amazing together. And then when I started knitting them up in this particular pattern, I don't know what it was, but I kept getting 1960s beach vibes not in the best way in my mind. <laughs> and once you see that, it's kind of hard to unsee it. 
And then, you know, when I got to this part, though, I liked it a lot better because I felt some major 70s vibes going on. And I am in my 70s era. I pretty much live in my 70s era forever. So once I did that, I was like, oh yes, yes, those colors are good together and I'm very happy <laughs> once again. I do think though that this is a super fun 70s vibe shawl in totality. <laughs> so once it was done, I kind of felt the need to style it in a very 70s way. And one of my favorite outfits to wear it with is this denim jumper. It's uh, you know, completely denim. It has wide leg bell bottom pants. It zips up. It has the pockets. <laughs> it's got some great stretch. I feel like it does a great job of capturing the 70s vibe. So, when it was done, I did look at my finished shawl. I blocked it and I loved it. And then I sat down and I cried a little bit because there were about 5,000 ends <laughs> that needed to be woven in. Just a heads up, each one of these stripes, there's two colors in each one of these, and each one of those is an end. <laughs> and they're on both sides of the shawl. Is it worth it for this lovely shawl? Yes, it is. I don't, not that I think Andrea Mowry would ever watch this podcast, but if she ever did, Andrea Mowry, you are a genius and I absolutely love this shawl, but those ends did make me cry a little bit. <laughs> um, so one thing that I did is that with the I-cord edging, I do find that a great opportunity to get your ends and just sew them into the I-cord. So you stick your needle, you thread your needle with the end and you put it into the I-cord and you just kind of thread it down like three inches and then you pull it back out and you pull it a little tightly so that the I-cord is scrunched up a little bit. You clip your end and then you stretch your I-cord back out and boom, your end disappears inside of it. <laughs> so I did that with all of my ends and they were hidden very, very well, except for right here at this end, some of them are starting to pop back out. And the fact that this is a super wash yarn, it means that the ends didn't felt super well in whenever I blocked it. But um, that's okay because I can just kind of push them back in and, and they'll be fine. There's no ends in the middle of the shawl. Kind of like if you're making a sweater with super wash yarn, you can't spit splice. So a lot of times you will have to weave in ends, you know, in the middle of your fabric. There are none in the middle of this, which is great. And the edges are kind of, they'll kind of fold up underneath and it's wrapped around your neck. So it hides it <laughs> very well. I'm going to show you how I wear this. And I'm sure that Andrea Mowry, she always does a great job of showing you how to wear shawls. So I would recommend watching her latest video whenever she releases it, because I'm sure she'll show you how she does it. But the way I am going to wear it is pretty much just like a triangle scarf. So I have the long end here. I apologize in advance because I'm sure there's going to be some microphone scratching, but then I just take these two ends and I tuck it under. Then I'm going to take the edge here and make sure that it is pulled out so you can see that beautiful lace and colors and straighten it and have it sort of pointed at an angle this way. Even though it's a DK weight shawl, it does not feel too heavy. It feels really nice. The super wash yarn kind of helps with that as well. And I'm just really happy with it now that it's finished. I, I really like it. I love the different texture from 
the garter, the stripes, the brioche, the lace. I mean, it's just brimming with different textures and it definitely keeps you from getting bored because number one, it's not a difficult pattern in the sense that you know, you're constantly have to follow a chart or anything like that. After I did the first two sections, I was completely able to memorize the pattern and I really didn't have to look at it again. I do think there were, uh, until I got to the, the lace sections, there were some lace in the lace parts I didn't need to look because of the way it had you add stitches wasn't always the same. I don't think, maybe it was, I can't remember now. I just remember that the garter, the stripes, and the brioche, I definitely was able to memorize. So it's not taxing as far as having to com constantly look at a pattern, but it is changing up what you're doing between the stripes, the garter, the brioche, enough that it's very engaging. So I think that that makes for a great knit whenever it's not too complicated, but you're not doing the exact same thing all the time. So I really like this. I highly recommend it. And I hope Salty Blonde Fibers will have some kits because I really, really liked her, her colors. One thing I will say is that um, I'm not sure if she's going to change her yarn requirements. She did call for four skeins of the main color and then one each of the contrast colors. I did not use all of my contrast colors, but I for sure did not even touch my fourth ball of yarn. So she may change it to only needing three skeins of the main color, and that's going to depend on your DK weight yarn. This is a super wash merino 100 gram skein of DK weight yarn, and I did not need my fourth skein at all. I can't imagine anybody needing it. Um, but that may depend on the, the fiber base that you're using. So I would pay attention to that, but I, if she hasn't changed it, I don't think that you would need a fourth skein personally. All right. Now for a couple of my whips that I have been working on this week. All right. First up, I want to show you my step-by-step -step cardigan. So I really haven't got to devote a huge amount of time to this, but I did finish my body. So I did about nine inches of, of the body and then I did three inches of ribbing. And after the three inches of ribbing, I did an Italian tubular bind off. I did not do the two rows of double knitting. I just did the sewn bind off and I think it looks pretty good. It has not been blocked or anything, but I always think that that bind off looks best for me without the two rows of double knitting. I think that the two rows of double knitting make it look too bulky for me and that may be because I'm such a loose knitter. For those who have a tighter gauge, I think that it would probably look nice and neat. I think probably it's because of my my very loose <laughs> knitting that um, doing those two extra rows make it look a little bit too bulky for me. Anyway, uh, as I've mentioned before, Noro Madara yarn is a single ply, and this is the color Sake. I am testing this cardigan for Florence from Handmade by Florence on Instagram and YouTube. And she used this exact yarn in this exact color. And I had this yarn that I was sort of hoarding for something special. I knew exactly what I wanted to knit. And it was this cardigan, <laughs> only this cardigan wasn't really in existence yet. And she got the same yarn, very similar timing as me. And she started knitting this pattern that she was going to write up. And in that moment, I knew that was what I wanted to use it for. So I held onto the yarn until the pattern was ready and I'm really excited to be able to use it for this. So I bound off and started my double knit button band. This is the first time that I've done a double knit button band in worsted air and weight yarn and it, is feels very substantial. <laughs> it's 
a little, it feels a little puffy to me because I'm so used to doing a double knit um, edging in fingering or very light DK. So this is the first time I've ever done one in this weight of yarn. And I did my buttonholes. Unfortunately, I did the method where you do break your yarn. I, I do think that there's a way you can do it. Um, I think Petite Knit actually has a tutorial on how to do it without breaking your yarn. But I just went ahead and followed um, Florence's instructions in the pattern. And it looks nice and neat. I would just have to weave in my ends later <laughs> at each of those buttonholes. But there's only four, so it's not that bad. I'm about a third of the way around the back of my neck with the button band. So I just need to finish that and then go straight down the other side. I don't have to do buttonholes on that side. And then I can start the sleeves, which the sleeves I think are going to be very quick knits. It will be on US 9 or 5 and a half millimeter needles. I believe that's correct. And my plan is to do 16 inch circulars for as long as possible <laughs> on the sleeves. And then I'll switch to nine inch circulars. But yeah, here's my, here's my cardigan progress so far. Uh, it's just a simple raglan style pattern. And I chatted a little bit more about this on last week's episode. So you can go back and get more details on it. And then whenever I finish it, I will, I'll give more details about the pattern in. Okay, the other sweater that I have been knitting on is part of the Pohyola Cal that I am co-hosting with Sari Nordland. This is her design and it's an absolutely beautiful color work circular yoke pullover and here is my progress <laughs> I have to tell y'all I am in love with this sweater in every way I love the yarn I love the pattern I love the colors <laughs> so I am knitting this in Sonder Yarn Co fingering weight four ply and it is a uh, BFL Massim Mix, and it's really a lovely yarn. So it's a light fingering, it's a fingering weight, and as you're knitting with it, it definitely appears to me, you know, more as a light fingering weight yarn, but when sh once you soak it, it blooms nicely, in my opinion. And the sort of rustic quality, um, the wooly quality, I don't know if I would call it rustic, it, because to me, it's not itchy. It, it definitely has a wooly feel to it, but it's not itchy to me. Um, I think that it is great for color work. So it uses three colors, and this was uh, very kindly sent to me as yarn support for the knit along. And I'm using the colors offline, and then personal space, and the rusty brown is full English. So I am addicted to this pattern. In fact, I would only knit on this, except for the fact that I have a test knit due on the 20th of March. <laughs> so I've got to hurry up and finish that. This pattern does call for three-stranded color work and pearls in the three-stranded color work while knitting in the round. So at first I was a little bit intimidated by that. I have done pearls in color work because I have done color work flat. And in that situation, you are purling every stitch on the wrong side. But I've never done pearls in color work on the right side knitting in the round. So I, it sounded scary. And well, it didn't sound scary. It sounded like a lot of work that I wasn't sure I was willing to do. But I feel like this has leveled up my color work knitting skills a little bit because um, I've always, well, I don't know, I haven't always, but I have gotten very comfortable with doing color work with two hands in the sense of with one color, my dominant color, I will pick and with my background color, I will flick. So I'm pretty proficient at moving quickly with uh, two strain color work. 
However, I did not think that I could do three stranded color work with purling and do it with two hands. In fact, for a few rows, I didn't. And then all of a sudden it hit me that I could keep my knit, the stitches that I was gonna be knitting, I could keep that color in the hand for the dominant color to pick with because that was never purled. And then I could use my flicking hand, my right hand to, um, to pick up and set down my other two colors that I would be knitting and purling with. And that sped me back up a little bit. Now, because I have to stop and pick down and set up with this one hand, that does, you know, still take some time, but it's actually moving along pretty well. And then there's some rows that I'm only using two strands and I'm only ever purling with one color. So that is fantastic because I can just make sure that the color I'm knitting with is my dominant color held in my left hand that I'm picking with and then I can just purl with my right hand and I never have to set either one of them down and I mean that has gotten really fast so I feel like this has been a great learning experience for me and that's why I think that as a knitters if we want to you know continue to get better we need to keep doing things we haven't done before never box yourself into only a certain pattern or a certain stitch because you feel comfortable with it um, only by, you know, trying the new things and the hard things will you ever get good at those things. So, yes, this is something that I was not good at. And am I an expert? Absolutely not. And am I an expert at this kind of color work? Lord, no. But I am getting much better at it. And it is uncomfortable <laughs> at first, you know, as I'm trying to do this in a new way. But there's something that I have always been told with music um, when it comes to piano. And, you know, not, there are no hard pieces or easy pieces, but there's only familiar and unfamiliar things. So if you're trying something new that's unfamiliar, then it feels hard to you. If you are doing something that is very familiar to you, then it seems easy to you. And only by trying the unfamiliar things will they become easy for you. So I am absolutely applying that to my knitting and I feel very intrigued by this new possibility. And I feel like certain color work patterns that I have absolutely refused to knit up to this point, um, I'm now willing to do those and I feel like I can do them faster and more proficiently. And that's not to say that we have to be fast when knitting. It is a slow craft and I do appreciate that, but I don't like for things to be painfully slow. I think that if there's a way that we can do something more proficiently and in an easier way, then yeah, we probably want to know how to do it. So I am very very thrilled with this new color work knitting technique that I feel like I'm getting better at. You know, I've, I've heard a lot of people talk about knitting rings for color work and that's not something I've ever tried. I wouldn't even, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. For now, I'm going to stick with this and just try to get really good at this and then maybe I'll try something new <laughs> with the knitting rings. I think for now this is working out really well though. I have only got like four, I think I've only got four rows of the color work section left and then I'll be ready to split her sleeves. That will be an exciting day. <laughs> so hopefully next time I do a podcast, I will have a finished step-by-step -step cardigan and a pohiola pullover that has been split for sleeves and working on that body. So if you would like to join in the Pohiola Cal, then you are very welcome to join us. There is a Ravelry thread on Sari's Ravelry group. So I will link to that in the description. And if you post on Instagram, then you can use the hashtag Pohiola K-A-L for Pohiola Cal. And use the hashtag Pohiola Pullover so that we can see it in that as well. 
Also feel free to tag me because I love seeing all the colors that y'all are choosing. It's giving me lots of color work ideas. <laughs> and the knit along is going to run, it started at the beginning of March and it's going to run until the last day of April, 2024. So there's still plenty of time. Okay, the other thing I have been doing is trying to ply my um, Ozark Dreaming Fiber, which was very kindly sent to me by Primrose Yarn Co. And I think it's just absolutely stunning. However, we've had a lot going on this past week. We had a family friend pass away and um, we had a memorial service -ish and just a lot going on with all of that. So my spending time was very limited, but I have high plans to finish applying that today actually. And I'm very excited to see how it's gonna look like all finished up. For now though, I will show you a project that I have never made before, but I am excited to get started on it. So I recently shared that I was really interested in knitting a dress for this summer. And I have seen a lot of different knit dresses and a lot of them are made out of fuzzy wools and alpacas and mohair and, and beautiful fabrics. But the truth is a knitted dress like that would get very little wear for me here in Arkansas, just maybe like a month of the, of the whole year. And it seemed like a long commitment because probably have long sleeves. Um, a lot of them that I love even have color work and I'm just not in a place to be able to do that right now. So instead I decided I wanted to make a spring slash summer dress. And one that really caught my eye is a pattern by Sari Nordland, and it's called the Winona Dress. So she knit hers out of San Nisgarn Ticklina, and I honestly didn't even know that Ticklina existed. I have Lena, and I have Tin Lena, and I love them both, but they added a new line to the Lena bases, and it is Ticklina, or a chunky weight yarn. So it's the same makeup of 53% uh, cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. And Sandus Garn is a Norwegian yarn factory. And um, there's it, it has kind of felt inaccessible for a long time to people here in the United States, but thankfully in the last probably two or three years, um, it has slowly been, it has slowly been added to a few different yarn stores here in the U.S. So there's places online that you can order it or in person. And I think it's a great option because you can get some 100% wool yarns at prices that are a lot more reasonable or a lot more accessible. Whereas a lot of the hand-dyed yarns I love. I love supporting those businesses. They're very special, but they're not always accessible. And um, I'm not saying that the hand dyers are doing any, anything wrong because they really don't make much profit at all. Um, if you look at how much it costs to actually purchase the yarn that they use to then dye, they are, they have very little profit margin. So I don't mean that negatively whatsoever. Um, just that sometimes it's not always accessible. And um, so I think this is a great option to keep in mind. And this is a really nice summer yarn. So I am excited to cast this on and get started on my very first knitted dress. And I love the fact that it is stockinette it's going to be knit in the round and it's going to be knitted a chunky gauge. So all of that gives me high hopes that I'll finish it and <laughs> to wear it this spring and summer. And I chose the color 6531, which I think is also known as like icy blue. So this was very generously provided as yarn support 
from Mother Knitter, which is a great place that you can find Santa's Garn yarn. So I will link that in the description box below. And there also may be a discount code coming for all of you if you would like to get some yarn from Mother Knitter. But I think this is going to be a, a nice option. I also think that the thicker yarn and fabric might be a little bit easier for me to wear whereas a super thin or um, sheer fabric would be a lot harder for me to wear in style so i think this is going to be a great option i also wanted to show you something that i just got in the mail so one of my absolute favorite stitch marker makers is horse feather fiber arts and she recently had an update like i don't know a week or two ago and I got these super fun stitch markers. There's a bird and some flowers. And she always has really great nature inspired um, stitch markers and, I, and progress keepers. And I thought these were super fun. So I had to snag these up. Okay, last of all, I wanna show you something that I pulled out of my fabric. You've seen this before because I made a Augustina boxy top shirt. So that's a free pattern that I will link below. You can find it at the fabricstore.com. Uh, but I used some double gauze from Blackbird Fabrics in this citron, this citron colorway, and I love it. And I decided that I wanted to make a dress out of this citron double gauze fabric. I think it'd be, it's so breathable. It's so lightweight. And I think it will be absolutely wonderful for a summertime dress. And I think that the pattern I have chosen is going to be the Orchards dress by Vivian Chowchin. So I've already had it printed from PDF plotting. I really like to have my patterns printed because sometimes I have a really hard time getting the patterns to print to the correct scale so they come with a little box that's supposed to measure whatever it says it's supposed to measure a lot of times it'll be one inch and when i print a lot of times it just it you know it takes forever trying to get it to the correct <laughs> size and then if your paper just kind of moves a little bit suddenly nothing lines up whenever you go to cut it out it's all very frustrating so pdf plotting printing services cures all my ills when it comes to <laughs> pattern assembling. <laughs> all right, I need to get busy plying my fiber. And I think I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and get some work done. <laughs> surprise but I can't sleep war in my mind I'm trying to fight a war in my mind I don't know who's the winner tonight but it ain't
Thank y'all so much for hanging out with me again today. If you enjoy videos like this, then please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. It really and truly helps my channel out very much. And I appreciate each and every one of you for being here. I also love reading your comments. They make my day. And I try to get back to all of you. Sometimes it takes me a while, but I do try to eventually get the chance to um, reply to all the comments. So thank you very much for leaving me a message. I also want to say a big thank you because I did receive a pattern last week from my Ravelry wish list and that just made my week. I really appreciated that. So thank you very much. And if you ever would like to support the channel in that way, then I have a link to my Ravelry wish list in the description box below. All right, until next week, happy knitting, y'all.